that the focus for the Fed is really going to be in the stickiness of the rise in labor costs. Yeah, well, I'm in her camp. I think she's got it right. Uh, I mean, recession risks obviously are, are high, uh, given the high inflation and the Fed on high alert. But I think there's a path forward without uh, going into recession. And I think it goes back to the fact that inflation will moderate. I mean, CPI, consumer price inflation, year over year is just over 7%. If you told me, if you asked me back a year from now, it's half that, you know, three, three and a half percent, I'd say that sounds about right to me. That assumes you know, we don't see another spike in gasoline and oil prices, which seems like the, you know, obviously a lot of risk around that, but the most likely scenario. But you're right, to get the inflation uh, numbers back to the Fed's target, which is two to two and a half percent on the CPI, I do think we need to see uh, wage growth roll over. That'll be trickier, that'll be uh, more difficult, but I think very doable by, you know, summer of 2024. And uh, so I think we can get through this reasonably gracefully. It's going to be, you know, uncomfortable at times, but reasonably gracefully without a recession. Summer of 2024, just to pick up on that thread for a minute, why so long? And, and, and I ask that wondering whether, because at least I'm having conversations with some CEOs and, and some folks at companies about how quickly the layoffs are now starting to happen, and yet we're not seeing it in the macro data. Is there a lag effect in much the same way we talk about lag effect, effects around, for example, housing data? Yeah, it's going to take, just take some time. I mean, we're already seeing the easing in inflation now because of the stable oil prices, down oil prices, and uh, that that that'll continue through mid next year. Then the next uh, step in the uh, slowing in inflation will be this time next year when the cost of housing services roll over. And that goes to the weakening in rents that we're experiencing right now. It just takes about a year for that to flow through. And the last uh, part of it to get inflation back all the way in is getting those wage uh, wage growth down in service price inflation with. Obviously, service companies are very labor intensive. That'll just take some time. And that's exactly that. That'd be great if that happens, because that means the job market is throttling that back, but uh, not so much that we're, we're going into recession. I, I will say, Morgan, I do think the labor market is probably weaker than the payroll employment numbers would suggest. So we got, what, 250, hmm. 275,000 in monthly job gains. I, my sense is it's probably weaker than that. We're just not seeing it yet because a lot of there's been a lot of layoffs. And folks are getting severance because these are tech workers and people working in financial services, uh, white collar jobs, they get severance. And because of that, it takes a little bit of time for that severance to run off and for that to show up in the, the statistics. So I, my sense is the labor market is easing here pretty quickly. We will get that wage growth down, but it'll take some time. It won't be, you know, next quarter or even next year. It'll be sometime in 2024. Hey, Brent, I wonder this um, this view that you turn your back on tech and start embracing industrials and uh, I guess even energy, small caps, uh, China, gold, is that becoming uh, too well understood? How much more fuel is in that kind of trade? Yeah, I, I guess I came into the year kind of the contrarian there and talking about uh, hope streams, themes and meme stocks and not just overweighting U.S. large cap growth, which I think many investors had done for years. I still think there's some time in the trade. I mean, if you talk about the earnings decline that you're looking at, you want to be in things that have a margin of safety against that. Things like the U.S. S&P 600 are small caps, traded 13 times 2023 20, earnings that have been marked down 14% already. And so to me, that's where you want to be, especially if you think there will be a recession or a shallow recession. The market on the other side of that will come out of that with small caps leading. And so we still want to be positioned there, but certainly those other parts of the market that were really expensive coming into this year have seen the biggest price declines and look just a bit cheaper. And so perhaps I'm not as emphatic as I was, uh, you know, year, a year ago or so, uh, but still think there's opportunity and value there. So, Brent, we'll ask you the same question we just discussed with Mike Santoli. What is the bond market signaling from your standpoint? The bond market is signaling recession. Look, I, I think there's going to be a recession, but I think it will be shallow. And maybe we should stop talking about soft landings and soft recession instead, instead talk about soft recessions. Um, to, to me, th there's going to be a recession, but the good news is, is it puts the final nail in the coffin of the sticky inflation commentary alongside that home and rent price thing that will be turning in 2023. Um, that's where I think there's room on the other side of this for the Fed to pause and then pivot, uh, especially with inflation expectations right now still anchored. And so, yes, a recession, um, uh, but mild and shallow uh, with better days ahead on the other side of it. And so, again, your position is to... to you mentioned what the you know some of those cheaper sort of mid cap and small cap stocks is that sort of where you think the value is going to be 
Yeah, so we increased our bond exposure in October because we believe that you were going to see the recession word come up more often. And so we've had this uh, inflation commentary, which has really driven us to lows. That actually bottomed in the S&P 500. The S&P 500 bottomed October 12th, one day before we saw that core CPI had actually peaked. I think you're now in this recessionary time period, but it's going to be short and shallow. And as I mentioned before, on the other side of this, you want to be in things that are more economically sensitive, like U.S. mid caps and U.S. small caps that also have the benefit of being extremely cheap. Uh, and so that's the areas we focused on. And dare I say, international stocks, after a decade of underperformance, probably have a strong currency tailwind pushing forward, which I think will also elevate them in 2023.